Welcome to season one of the Animal Highlight. This first season of Animal Highlights is focused in on animals and the urban and has been extracted from season three of the Animal Turn podcast. In this episode, we speak all about squirrels. Welcome to the Animal Highlight. Now, I knew when I started the season on urban animals, I simply had to have an animal highlight that focused on squirrels. So when they came up in the beginning of the episode with Philip, I did a little dance because it was the perfect excuse to do an animal highlight on squirrels. I cannot begin to tell you how enamored I am with squirrels. I could watch them pick up nuts, bury them and pat the ground all day long. They are just, they're just so fun to watch. And it turns out that the relationship with finding and burying nuts is really fascinating and intricate. So a single squirrel can bury something like 10,000 nuts in an autumn season. And the reason they do this is because squirrels don't hibernate in the winter. So they're literally squirreling away food for the winter. But where it gets really, you know, just mind boggling is that of those 10,000 nuts, they're able to find something like 4,000 of them again. And this isn't in a small little area. So it's not like, uh, you know, one squirrel has buried 10,000 nuts in a single backyard. No, it's an area the size of five football fields. So they're burying their nuts all over the show, which is why they're called scatter hoarders. But the way in which they find them involves their memories and a couple of really interesting memory strategies. One of them is that they cluster their nuts together. So if they've got peanuts, they always bury their peanuts in the same area. If they've got some hazelnuts, they'll bury their hazelnuts in roughly the same area as well. This way they know that, ah, if I feel like a hazelnut today, I'm going to head that way. But if I feel like a peanut, I'm going to go the other way. And on top of that, they also use landmarks. So they'll remember if they've buried their nuts, you know, close to a bench or close to a tree stump. And this is how they then zone in on this really large area and figure out where they left their nuts. And it's not just the burying of these nuts that's interesting. It's the stealing of nuts too. And I don't know if you know this, so they are really, really clever at watching other squirrels. And something like a fifth of squirrels, they don't forage their own nuts. They instead watch where other squirrels bury their nuts and steal them. So let me explain. You've got squirrel one grabs a nut and they run off into the field and they start digging a hole to bury the nut. Squirrel two is sitting there sneakily watching them bury the nut. And when squirrel one runs away, squirrel two comes in, takes the nut and hides it somewhere else. And sometimes squirrel one is aware that squirrel two is watching them. So what they do is they don't bury anything. They they lie. They deceive squirrel number two by pretending to bury something. They pat the ground. They say, yes, 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 I've put put a nut here, and they run away. And squirrel two swoops in to, to steal, finds nothing. But while they're distracted, squirrel one runs somewhere else to bury their prize, which... Just the the, the level of thought that goes into that. That's a squirrel seeing another squirrel, recognizing that squirrel's intention of stealing their nut and then deciding to, you know, deceive them and run somewhere else. It's 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 an incredible thing. And here and here squirrels are all about the city watching, you know, we could watch them do this anytime, which is just of course if they're in your city, which is just amazing. Some other cool facts and things you might not know about squirrels. So a squirrel nest is called a dray. They're actually pretty distinguishable. They look like uh, large, messy nests, and they have their babies in these drays, and when the babies are born, they are blind and hairless, and the mom gives them milk for the first couple of weeks, and they stay in there until their eyes open and they get some fur, and they can run about. If you're interested in a paper about kind of the relationship between urbanization and squirrels in the United States, definitely check out Etienne Benson's the urbanization of the eastern gray squirrel in the United States. Now, the reason this is interesting is a lot of people kind of think, oh, squirrels just naturally, you know, in in quotation marks, naturally belong to urban spaces or to parks. But in fact, they were introduced. There were these ideas of squirrels kind of representing nature and their introduction to parks wasn't always simple. You know, there's a whole ecology around squirrels and what they eat and the types of trees they want to live in. And there was some ignorance as to what squirrels needed. So the size of the squirrel population in Central Park now is just absolutely massive. And trying to think about what the history of those squirrels are and how they came to be there is, I think, a a fascinating question. 
And another place to just go and watch squirrels and just marvel at how intelligent they are and how quick they are at problem solving, you should check out Mark Rober's YouTube channel. So Mark Rober is a science educator. He actually used to work for NASA and he does a whole range of just brilliant YouTube videos. He's the type of guy you watch and you think, oh man, I want to have a beer with him. He just seems like someone you want to be friends with. And he does these really cool videos. And one of them is looking at squirrels because these squirrels keep stealing seeds from him. And he develops an entire maze for the squirrels to get to nuts. And they figure it out. They figure out, they figure it out and they do it in absolutely incredible style and flourish. This is a bird feeder and everything to my left is my attempt at making it squirrel proof. On top of that, Mark also starts to explain some fascinating features of squirrels, such as why they're always able to land on their feet. And I'll give you a hint. It's got to do with where they position their eyes and how they use their tails. But I'm not going to tell you anything more. You need to go and check out the channel. It's well worth the visit. Go watch those videos and just marvel and appreciate how awesome squirrels are. <laughs> Thank you to Animals and Philosophy, Politics, Law and Ethics for sponsoring the Animal Turn podcast where these highlights were taken from. And another massive thank you to Christian Mentz for editing this episode. Thank you also goes to Rebecca Shen for designing the Animal Highlight logo and episode artwork. This is the Animal Highlight with me, Claudia Hurtenfelder. <laughs>